join us for a review of the Alpha Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Let's go. Usually with facelifts, manufacturers then change the face, like a front grille or change the headlamps. Well, Alpha said, our car looks kick-ass anyway, why shouldn't we change anything? <laughs> yeah, that's the decision and you can understand it. It's really beautiful front here and especially very agile look for an SUV. The headlamps here with a nice daytime running light and the only thing I think they could have done uh, here, there's no LED for the headlamps still. They go with by Xenon here. 4 meters 69, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches is the length of the Alpha Stelvio. Yeah, this time I was entering from this side again. <laughs> I hope you took the right bet here. Famous drinking game on Autogefühl. Then we can take a look at the wheels here. 20 inch would be standard for the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. A very unique open wheel design we know that already from alpha black design in here too optional you can now with the face also go a size bigger to 21 inch then we have the qv logo right here and also black frames around the window and then the design line the main one is here at the height of the door handle contrasting lower bumper for the rear lamps you do get led now so a more modern style also when you look at the inside here then black stelvio logo here in the qv version also with the all-wheel drive that it has the q4 logo it's a rear wheel biased all-wheel drive system ta-da 2.9 v6 ferrari engine here for the Stelvio Quadrifoglio, 510 horsepower, and the acceleration figure is 3.8 seconds, 2 mile kilometers, or 62 miles an hour. All wheel drive is standard with a rear wheel bias. car key is pretty thick but light and then the doors you close it here with keyless entry or you put your hand on the inside then just again to open the vehicle and then inside the doors the quadrifoglio scheme is carbon fiber here being used there soft touch leatherette then on the top part then interesting door handles optional Harman Kardon sound system and then we have also here these covers, soft covers for the dashboard, red contrast stitches, new steering wheel with a facelift, red contrast stitches on the inside. Optional, you can also get it with some Alcantara, but I don't know why they have, have done it that way. The optional Alcantara steering wheel should have, you know, had Alcantara where you grip the vehicle, actually, I think. Interesting emotional red start-stop button direct at the steering wheel and also carbon fiber use. Then, as for the seats, you always get Alcantara, either with the standard sport seats, they already would have an integrated head restraint. These here are the optional bucket seats. It's the carbon fiber seat, also with the integrated head restraint, and mainly Alcantara. There are some animal skin parts, partly, but main is Alcantara, and there you can see all the way the carbon fiber right here and also at the side they are still somewhat adjustable there's just one catch to it well a second one too but i'll uh, show that to you very soon the first catch is you cannot get this one here with seat heating so if you want seat heating you should stick with the base sport seat other than that the surprising thing is here when we did the very first seat test and also we drove around 
of course they're a little bit stiffer and slimmer than the other seats but for you know like so sporty looking bucket seats they are actually surprisingly comfortable so positive note on that and of course due to the microfiber surface they stay also quite cool in summer and cozy in winter so seating position here as i said is quite nice you can adjust the back part here even that's not possible with all bucket seats manual control also for front and back of course all manual thing because of the weight savings and the only thing here there's one electric motor in here for pumping it up and it's a very interesting process um i'm not sure it, it really feels different than any other seat you would have experienced that that way yeah interesting but i usually have it in low lowest position with one radius 86 or six with one still plenty of headroom left there's no panoramic roof in here but you could also get one and an interesting detail which would be the second reason not to pick the carbon fiber seats here when the co-driver is not with you or the passenger that's what you hear while driving so if you drive this car alone and have the carbon fiber bucket seat you have to close the seat belt your own yeah and drive them with the closed seat belts on the passenger side now to the interior where we also have some changes for you first of all horizontal stress right here red contrast stitches then beautiful with this carbon fiber insert that looks really sporty indeed there's a new 8.8 .8 inch screen that is now touch actually and that's general facelift change soon more to that screen what you can do with that however you can still control it here with the lower um, knob for turning and, and pressing and so on so that's still possible so both actually i think that's a good solution then the scenery already talked about that it's quite fancy new design then the gauges here they go really deep in their typical alfa romeo style that's a emotional driver's cockpit feature seven inch screen in the middle part a smaller one and then classic analog on the right and left side also soon more details to that scenery controls volume here for example on the right and on the left side for the cruise control since there's new level two autonomous driving systems now in an additional driver's assistance pack blind spot monitor adaptive cruise control and so on laking lane keeping assist more in the driving part then towards the middle right again there's still a climate unit that is manual like to have that one good to control it also while driving so the main menu has you know different shortcut gauges right here that's how it looks like and you can again as i told you earlier use the lower controller or then the new touch the optional sound system we have in here we can also test that harman kardon no yeah, that sounds quite decent yeah, why not? So, if you're a music lover, I think the optional one also plays a role. You've seen the CarPlay integration all over the screen, that's good. The GPS has been upgraded, yes, but I'm not that satisfied with it because when you have picked a road or picked a route, um, it's not that clear where to drive all of the time. And sometimes, you know, especially like when trying to center it again, doing this while driving is a little bit tricky these huge shifting pedals are really high class they feel very good and you can see a special thing here with maserati or alfa ferrari here they stick just to the steering column but not to the steering wheel different setup from other manufacturers is that they are mounted at the steering wheel and move alongside which you find better there's always a big discussion i'm personally a fan of if they are attached to the steering wheel directly Others argue that this is the better solution. What's your take? You're right, we forgot the door closing sound today. Let's do that. Mm, that doesn't sound too good, right? Not a very rich sound, so to say. But then to the rear doors. Here, inside again, soft touch material. That's good. Carbon fiber use, once again, very small door pockets. And then you can see the same Alcantara styling for the rear seats, that's cool. And you can also see how much carbon fiber is really used for that seat. Impressive look here also from the rear. But the question is, how much space will we have? The carbon fiber bucket seats will change the leg room. I don't have the direct comparison now to the normal seat, but it will be different than the other one in a, in a, in a way. But here you can see, I think it's rather a little bit more space with these here because they are slimmer. I do expect that. 
because the stairway in general is no room one there, so to say. But here, still some legroom left with my maze 86 or 61, and headroom here without the primary roof is okay. I can also put a hand over my head here. The liter figure for this trunk is 525 to 1600 liters, but what does it mean? Electric hatch, yeah, it takes quite a while to open, and then we have actually quite good dimensions at the first side. This cover here, right there, it doesn't have fixed rails at the side, therefore it's wobbling a little bit around here. Um, but at least, uh, you know, what I found interesting when you close it here, it slides up automatically, basically, and then you pull it down. And usually the other solutions are often like opposite way, you know, that you do it like this and have to pull it up and then fix it. But here I think that's a more intuitive use, because when you pull something, then you also pull it down automatically, in a way. So, yeah, interesting detail aspect to talk about. Anyway, we can already flip the seats from here. Let's do it here, but since here it needs another push then from there, but it's easily accessible. Welcome guys. Let's put it to the race mode. Yay! And let's go from about a hundred to that's 180. So there was 100 kilometers to 180 kilometers, and there was some serious sound there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's about the race mode. Of course, the race mode not recommended for wet situations and not recommended of course at all safety wise because the assistance systems are not all activated then ESC is off, actual accessibility control but we still have the all-way drive here rear wheel biased so it's safer than rear wheel, rear wheel only but I recommend you to watch me doing this and not necessarily do it and I mean you know, on open roads that's also you know good possibility let, let me take the risk so, one more time. <laughs> yeah, I was using a shifting pedal now. Um, that is some... I can't remember when we last time heard such a... Really, like literally a burst coming out there from the rear. Yeah, that's some serious business from the exhaust, and I just have to remember. Um, I mean, that, that's not the optional Akrapovic exhaust, that's the standard sport exhaust, you know. So, uh, yeah, for that, I think pretty impressive already here, and also a very good stability here on the motorway, definitely. Using a shifting pedal is a lot of fun because it's very large and they, you know, they stick to where they are. That's what they do. And you can also drive it just in the sports mode, by the way. Um, that's D mode here or dynamic mode. Let's see uh, what the sound in, in, in there. Yeah. So that's already totally fine. So I would rather recommend that. Then you also have the ESC on. You have assistance system still, but you already have a nice exhaust note. And just shifting down yourself before doing the acceleration, of course, helps you even further than, especially in here. And very stable on the motorway. As for noise insulation, by the way, it's quite okay, but not the best in this segment. So um, in this case, then some of the competitors do that better. They are more silent cars, definitely. Um, but overall still okay. Suspension is set really stiff, especially when you are in these dynamic modes. As long as the road is still quite okay, that's fine. But when the road gets a little bit worse, then you really feel that this suspension here is not... It's an adaptive suspension, yes. But it's yeah not comfortable at all when the road gets rough, so no compromise, so to say. Let's go really fast now. Let's see? 
So now we're about 200 kilometers now, that's 125 miles now, and you hear how like really, really loud it gets here. But the car really stable, um, some would then say feeling better than with the um, uh, Maserati Trofeo model recently of the Levante, where you hit the throttle at this speed and the car was shake, beginning to shake. That's not the case here, so the all-wheel drive has also good distribution and of course this Ferrari engine gives us a lot of boost, a lot of performance whenever we need it. Let me do some lane change here for you, see here how upright the car is remaining. Then in this case the stiff suspension plays in our hands of course, but in everyday driving life you really have some comfort issues with this suspension, no doubt about that. It will be a little bit more comfortable than here in the neutral mode, for example, um, the normal driving mode. Rather, you would stick to that because when you want to have some, you know, serious business still in acceleration, you can still always hit the throttle or just use the shifting pedals and then you're also just fine. So let me stick in this normal mode for a time because what has been updated is assistance systems now everything set on level two and for example you can activate the adaptive cruise control the adaptive cruise control is now also made to a lane keeping assist and so if you know all parameters are being set then even also traffic jam assist available blind spot monitors also in this pack there will be a, a, a triangle lighting up in the side mirrors so it's really good that's one of the best things about this facelift this update that you also have more safety systems in place so let's see you can activate or deactivate the lane keeping assist here and also the distance to the car in front of you you can set right there and at the moment i well, the car the side of the road with a broken windshield in the rear interesting stuff happens so distance to the car in front of us is being kept um, however don't have the impression that the lane assist would be on yet now the car is accelerating again but I mean sometimes you really wonder um, what the car is thinking um, that these lane assists sometimes do work and sometimes not but I can really tell you I have them all activated yeah so I'm not sure why. And it was, it's, it's what actually catching everything before. It doesn't have to do with the driving mode. Yeah, I don't know. So at the moment it's not catching the, you know, here the lane keeping assist, I have to do it on my own. So not really satisfied with this performance here yet. But the adaptive cruise control is cool and also that you have the blind spot monitor. You should definitely stick with this assistance systems package. Even for the quadrifolio, it's an option. And as for consumption or fuel economy, when you keep this car you know, in a really steady way, when you have like cruise control set to a reasonable speed, the minimum would be about 9 liters on 100 kilometers. That's about 26 mpg US to 31 mpg UK. However, we experienced that with this engine here, there's a very wide span between the minimum and the maximum consumption. So if you really floor it out and do some acceleration tests, it really can double the liter consumption. And now to our conclusion for today with the Alfa Stelvio in general but the facelift and today with the Alfa Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Well, exterior wise, surely one of the sportiest looking and really a beauty SUV. On the interior we also have a nice Italian design once again. Good upgrades here with the facelift with a little bit better material choices for the middle console for example. Also with the infotainment upgrades. Yeah, however, I'm not really that satisfied still with the software. I think it lacks some responsiveness. It should be faster and a little bit easier to control overall. With the touchscreen, however, it is easier to control than before, definitely. Very nice sports seats we had here today. As I said earlier, you have two different choices. Uh, the normal sports seats or then these upgrade bucket seats. But for bucket seats, they were also reasonably comfortable. And the good thing here is you have a very sporty car, but you still have this upright seating position from the SUV. That's why also you know people go for that. And in the driving part, we've seen Although it's a rather large SUV already, it has such a good driving dynamics. So 
great also with the steering update. The suspension really keeps the car upright, hardly any body roll. So it drives like a true sports car, although it is already a grown-up SUV. That's the special thing about it. The suspension, however, is really set without compromise on spoilness. So you do lose comfort here with the, I still call it QV version. So if you want more comfort, you would go then maybe for the bigger engine they have. But then, well, like, let's say the biggest petrol engine, the higher, highest horsepower spec engine they have on the petrol side. But don't go for the QV version to get a little bit more comfort out of it, depending on, you know, what you like best. And of course, you know, um, assistance systems wise has also been a good upgrade, but they are also not really keeping up with the competition. So overall, there are some, you know, things or like, let's say, like the bad resolution of the rear camera. So here and there and there, you always find some little details where you say, for including all the extras, 110,000 euros, things should be better, like the very details. But it is a very emotional car. The driving dynamics are excellent. Yeah, and the sound here would, of course, be something to go for it. But we've heard it that from the interior, it sounds even better, basically, than from the exterior. But nowadays, I mean, you can also understand that choice will probably even be a little bit different than with this optional Akrabovich exhaust. So, interesting insights for today for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell us your comments about this vehicle and also see you next time.